So you have an Elgato capture card, a MacBook slash iMac, you have a PS4 console, and you want to run the software OBS, right? Well, we all know OBS is free open broadcast software, and the equivalent will be XSplit. Unfortunately for Mac users, XSplit is not available for the Mac, and OBS is a little bit more difficult to use on Mac, and there's nobody out there making videos to really streamline this process for Mac users. So what I'm going to try to do here today is explain how you can use OBS and synchronize all the settings properly to stream, such on YouTube and services like Twitch. All right, first things first, I'm gonna talk about the programs you guys are gonna to need to get this process started. So it should go without saying that you guys should already have the Elgato software installed. If you are running the Elgato AC60 or the older version of the capture card, you should download the old version here for if your Mac OS is not up to date. Like I said, I don't have Mac OS 10.11. I have an older version, so I'm using the old version of Elgato software. And if you happen to purchase the HD 60S, if you're a new purchase of that device, then you have no choice but to get version 2.5 and your Mac OS is gonna have to be 10.11 or else the software just doesn't work. But this is where you're gonna get your download to have the Elgato program, should you not have it. Um, open broadcast software, same exact thing. I'm just backtrack here. Just type in OBS Mac. Click the first link you see here, obsproject.com slash download. Click on the Mac symbol, download for Mac. You're good to go with that, and you'll have OBS, you know, download, install that. And then you're gonna need a program called Soundflower to redirect the audio so it can be picked up from the sound of the desktop. And you're gonna need a program, Soundflower, to do so. Now, Soundflower right here is uh, no longer supported by Cycling74. I believe they passed that off to another company, but you can find this exact version right here, 1.6.6b, which is the version of Soundflower that I'm using, because I'm aware that there's a uh, newer version, but I'd rather stick to what I know. So you're gonna go ahead and download the Soundflower from this webpage here, and you're gonna click this link, uh, free download, and then you download it. If it doesn't download automatically, you can hit alternative, uh, alternative download, and if it still doesn't download for whatever weird reason, you can click here. See, that, that happens a lot. You can click here and you can force the download and you should see it downloading. So probably probably download. I'm now linked. Pause that. And you should see the version download right there. You click it and you have that installed. So now you have the three programs that you need to have the process installed. All right, so first things first, you guys are gonna go ahead and open up the Elgato Game Capture HD. That's the program I need you guys to open up right now. I want you guys to set a few things. I want you to make sure that this button right here is mute because if you have it on, it may be picking up the sound right now and I don't need that right now. For now, we're just gonna have it mute so I can explain things better for you guys. So, you know, once your game capture is functioning and working well, um, I just want you to make sure you select a uh, microphone. If you don't have an uh, external microphone with better audio quality, that's fine. You can always use the internal mic. It doesn't sound as good if you have one. Make sure that's hooked in now and then select that on the Elgato program. I'm using the AT2020 USB condenser microphone. Really good mic. I'll leave a link to that description box below if you're interested. And make sure this button right here is sure. highlighted blue. Right there, live commentary. Once you highlight that, it usually mute this by default. But just in case you haven't, make sure that blue button is highlighted. That way your mic is being activated. So you should see right here on the Elgato that your mic, when you speak, the levels start going up and down and the game audio in the background of the game, you can see me moving on left and right, it's being picking up an audio from the, obviously the dashboard of the PS4. Now the next thing you're gonna open up is the OBS program. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna get the, OB, uh, the Elgato inside the OBS program. Now this scene right here is exactly what you guys are probably looking for and it's already pre-made and set up but we're gonna act as if you, the person who's viewing the video, is gonna create a new scene. So you have your scenes and your sources. So you're gonna create a new scene. You're gonna hit the plus button, and let's just leave it scene one, whatever. Call it scene one. Now you should just have a blank screen. So typically what people do when they use OBS is the first thing when they hit the add button for sources is that they typically click and hit uh, game capture, which technically makes the most sense judging by the name. But when you hit game capture, I can tell you this for a fact, it just doesn't work. It doesn't show that the Elgato has a source and for some reason no applications pop up. It just doesn't work. Now for the Windows users, I believe this works for Windows dudes, but for the Mac users, we just don't have that luxury, which would make things a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Yes, now the another option which works for some Mac users from what I've seen in other videos is you can use Window Capture, right? Now Window Capture would make this so much easier, right? Because you can simply select the Elgato Game Capture window and then you can start to crop it but see, there's a major problem with window capture. Check it out. Now, I'm gonna stretch this out to fit in the whole panel right here, right? And look to the left where you see my Elgato and preview screen and the OBS. You see how it lags? There's a really bad lag. I don't know what it is with window capture and the Elgato software, but it is what it is. So therefore, 
this is not an option. So we're gonna go ahead and have to remove that and get rid of that. So our only option to get this to work is we're gonna have to use display capture. That's the only way that you're gonna have to get the Elgato's preview screen inside uh, the OBS to get that working fine. So I have two versions here. We're gonna call this display capture two, All right? And when you do that, you see the display is gonna say zero, just leave that and you're gonna crop, leave that none for now and hit okay see but now you have a screen like this right so you got the obs program in here and you see it moving around and it creates like this little infinite window it's really annoying and this is just not what you need and this is not what you want you only want the preview screen which is look at my mouse you can see right here you only want this to show up in the full screen of the of the obs software all right so clearly you're gonna have to crop it but before we do that i'm gonna show you the difference between window capture and display capture now when i move left and right it's synchronized and nice and smooth and it has like the same exact frame rate as it would have on the elgato software with the obs Yes, that's exactly what you want. Now, we're gonna have to play with some settings to get the cropping just right to fit, like I said, the Elgato preview screen on the full screen of the OBS software. So we're gonna right click, for those of you guys with the magic mouse or whatever, you're gonna right click and you're gonna go transform, you're gonna hit edit transforms. All right, so now you're gonna have to play these numbers, right? And like I said, the crop size and these numbers are gonna be different per person because everybody's not gonna have the same exact computer. Now the computer that I'm running, I'm running an iMac 5K display. So my numbers are not gonna be the same as yours if your display is 1080p, a 2K display, a 720p display. Like I said, this is where it's going to be different, right? So like I said, I'm running a 5K. Make sure, let me let me exit out. Make sure you have uh, some space for your Elgato software to the left. And I would say just move the OBS to the right to give you a little bit of room to work with. For guys who have a lot of space like me, people with a smaller uh, screen density, uh, you know, you're gonna have to move around and play around with that to give yourself some space. But hit transforms, and then now you're gonna have to type in your crop settings. Now, fortunately for me, I wrote this down. I'm just gonna type it in manually, but I'm gonna show you exactly how you can play around with yours. I'm gonna hit the crop for the left side. For me, it's gonna be 196. See that? You see how I cut off the border? Now check it out. You can click a little arrow and you can use your up and down key on your keyboard to play around with that to slowly move it around. But on the left, I want to just cut it out which is like at the very edge of the preview screen of the Elgato program. So I'm gonna go back up to 196, which I had before. Now the top part, I'm gonna have to crop that. Me and my 5K iMac is going to be 47. Again, you can click on the little arrow key here and you can play around to see if you can get it exactly right. So you can, you know, let it scroll up and down and use the arrow keys on your keyboard to slowly move the number up and down, but you can see how it starts to crop. I only want the top of the preview screen so that way it's cropped nice and good. Okay, and 47 is the correct number for me. So like I said, your, your computer's gonna be different here, so you're gonna have to remember that, guys. Just work with me. So I have a big area to crop on the right side. So let me move this down a little bit so you can see it better. I have a big area of the screen right here I have to crop just to get this little border in the Elgato program to work. All right? So now, my settings, once again, different for yours. 244, uh-oh, that's too big. See that? Now, same exact, same exact situation. Play the numbers again, you can move it around until you get it correct. It moves kind of slow on the computer here, but you know, I'm just giving you guys an example of how you can sit there and dance around. If you know the number specifically, you can go ahead and type it in. If you don't know the number specifically, you would do this process right here. It may take a while, but you'll get there. Okay, so like I said, 2447 is my number. And now for my last, the bottom part, 995. So you get an idea. So again, scroll but you see the difference see more of the border coming up I'll scroll the border up there bam so now you should have this right here now this should this is what you should be with now you just take a little corner of that screen and you just stretch it out and voila there you go now you have the full screen see on my Elgato to the left my OBS to the right now you should have the full screen for your gameplay capture and it's running nice and smooth. Now from there, now if you have uh, image overlays, this part should be really easy for you guys to do. You can hit the add plus button, uh, you can go to image and you can add like all your Twitch overlays, your stream overlays, whatever you gotta add. So let's just say JSilver social links. 
you hit that and this right here pops up and I can just stress that out and you can add that there if you want to add like a little twitch overlays and you can just play around with it stress that out to the full screen bam that's cool now um, the next thing uh, you guys want to do if you should you have it is add a face cam which you know gives you more liveliness to your stream so you're gonna go to video capture device and I have an existing webcam so I'm gonna go to video capture device right here so we're gonna add that and there you can see my face cam and right now it's delayed so I'm gonna move it over here to the right I mean you can do whatever the hell you want to do with yours and you can stretch it out play around with it one thing I want to tell you guys there is a 1.5 second delay between what you're seeing on your TV slash uh, game monitor and what's being processed to your computer on El Gapcho. All right, so this is the reason why there's a uh, delay in the face cam. I'm gonna demonstrate right here. To my right is my game monitor, which I game on, and to the left is obviously the 5K iMac, which I use my edits on. Look how the gaming monitor does what it does, and look at the delay on the iMac. Sorry if my uh, pixels kind of messed up, the lighting is bad, and doesn't seem to be too great in low lighting. But you see that delay. It happens in real time on the game monitor to the right, and there's a 1.5 second delay that's being processed on the computer. So this is the exact reason why you have to delay your face cam when you stream in an attempt to have it synced up. Like I said, it says on the Ogata website, it's about 1.5 seconds. But like I said, when I actually record and uh, stream, it's actually a little bit more than that. Go in your settings and tweak it. So this is just a demo to show you exactly why we put that face cam delay. So you're gonna go to filters and you're gonna hit add. And that's where you see this right here, this video delay. It's already added, so it's not gonna give me the tool twice. That's why you're seeing a delay when I talk. But it's a 1.5 seconds. For some weird reason, it doesn't translate that to me. You can play around with it. I put 16.50, because this is in uh, milliseconds, right? So a thousand milliseconds is effectively one second. You can put 1500 to equate for that 1.5 second camera delay. This is for when you stream, so you can try to have the face cam sync up with the audio when you're talking. But like I said, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, I put 1650, it's still a little bit off, but you can play around with that. It's not a big deal, but once you take that uh, camera delay off and put it to nothing, I guess. Now it's you're gonna see me talking live, live time. So now as I'm moving, it's synced up. But like I said, when you stream, you're gonna wanna have that delay. So when, once everything is all said and done, here's my regular console setup. I put the little face cam border. If you have that set up, you can add that. And here's the one we just created to demonstrate for you guys the setup. Okay, so side note, uh, make sure you guys Mac or iMac or whatever Mac uh, product you're running, make sure it's decently spec. My iMac is running eight gigs of RAM. Uh, it has a two gig dedicated video card and it has an i5 processor clocked at three gigahertz. And pretty much that's what I have. You can be spec higher. You should have no issues at all. If you're spec lower, I do not. I don't know the exact minimum specs to have this setup running flawlessly, so I can't answer that question. So, you know, like I said, go figure. You know, if your spec, if your iMac is spec lower, uh, you can try this whole setup anyway and see if it works. If it doesn't, then you know, I'm gonna tell you, bros. Anyway, we're gonna move on to Soundflower. So you have Soundflower installed, like I said earlier, and you know, it's right here, right? So now you have Soundflower opened up. You're gonna see this little. Uh, symbol for the program at the top of your dock and your Mac. So now this is uh, on none, right? And what we're gonna go ahead and do now is you're gonna hit the little Apple symbol. You're gonna go to system preferences <coughs> and you're gonna go to sound and you should see output, right? Now you should see Soundflower two channel. That's what you're going to select in order to now route the sound to be picked up from your desktop, right? Cause now, like I said, the audio here is playing from see the game audio and the chat audio from the live commentary on the Elgato, it's playing. And the OBS right now, it's not picking up any sound. You see this right here where it says desktop audio. There's no audio being picked up. There's no sound bar gains popping up. There's a reason for that. This button right here. Now, what I told you guys earlier, now you're gonna have to unmute the Elgato software. Now, once you unmute it, see now the OBS is picking it up, right? So as you can see right now, I have a pair of studio monitor headphones on. So that way there is no sound being played out of the computer speakers. 
you don't want any sound being played out of your computer speakers because if it does it's going to be picked up as extra noise and the microphone which you can see right here my face my face cam now here's the tricky part when you do that right and you have your sound flower on and you selected it right here the output sound is going to be sound flower to channel if you close this whole setup and let's say if you open up your browser and try to play a YouTube video, you will not hear any sound. That's because your sound is being rerouted through Soundflower. Now, there's a way to have it rerouted through Soundflower and you can still hear it, is if you go right here and you select built-in output. You know what I'm saying? So you can have that. I'm saying. So you can have that and now you can hear the sound from the Elgato. And now you can hear the sound from the Elgato. Now typically, I play with it off. That's just how I like to do it. But you can have it on. But you always remember, guys, now when you have the sound flower on, any type of sound that's playing through your desktop, if you so much as have a YouTube video open and you hit play on a YouTube video, such as these videos you see right here, it's going to pick up that sound. It's going to pick up that sound and it's going to get incorporated into your stream slash uh, screen record if you screen record with the OBS. So make sure nothing is playing, no type of sound. Don't go on Twitch. Don't go on YouTube. Don't play any videos while you're streaming or recording because that sound is going to get picked up unless you intend for that to happen. If you don't intend for that to happen, make sure there's nothing playing. And when you hit that stream button or record, make sure this is not muted. Now is the time to unmute this. If this is muted, you move this stuff out the way, right? Look at OBS. If this is muted, now OBS is not picking up any sound. So you got to make sure the mute button on OBS is not muted. And also, as another thing, make sure nothing is blocking the preview screen. You see my mouse on the preview screen? Make sure nothing is blocking the preview screen of the Elgato. If you do so, now check it out. If you drag any icons inside of it, it's going to basically be blocking your gameplay. Unless you want to show your viewers or if you want to screen record something like that, then you do so and you do it that way. But if not, make sure you move everything outside of the way of your Elgato preview screen. You don't want nothing to be in there. I made a couple rookie mistakes before and, you know, did that, but you live and learn, see? You don't want nothing to block the Elgato preview screen. But uh, let me go into another option to help you guys out just in case you may be lost. So now you got the whole, uh, the, the course set up. So you want to actually get into the streaming aspect of OBS. Let's just go into settings. And um, we're going to hit stream. So if you're going to stream on Twitch, and if you're going to stream on YouTube, you obviously would select either or. Now if you're a person who does other stream services, um, I believe you go to custom streaming server. No, no, no. You can actually do custom streaming server, not that, but uh, you can show all services. I'm sorry, I meant to click that. Show all services, and you have uh, a lot more options to select the service you want to stream to. But like I said, the typical person is gonna we're gonna use Twitch, we're gonna use YouTube, uh, maybe like a few people who use Hitbox. But in any case, um, you get your stream key, and if the stream key location settings is different, uh, Twitch and YouTube, you can just go ahead and Google that. I'm not gonna put that in this tutorial, but just Google your stream key, and you copy and paste it in here. I'm not going to show you my stream key because obviously for security reasons and check out your output. Uh, you're going to now from here, you're going to have to check your uh, your upload speed. So I'm going to give you guys a nice website so you can know your upload speed as possible. And do not use, I repeat, do not use uh, speedtest.net. You're going to go to, here we go, testmy.net slash up upload. Now this will give you a much more accurate uh, test of what your upload is because I believe what uh, speedtest.com does is it uses like a uh, what I believe is a, a flash plugin and it gives you an inaccurate upload reading so what you're going to go ahead and do is uh, go to test.testmy.net and then you're going to go ahead and click a manual size because obviously when you stream typical the average stream is about an hour to an hour and a half maybe two hours and further beyond so let's go ahead and test a 30 megabyte upload file. You know, this is where you give your computer some time to let it test what your connection is doing. Because that way you can hit the appropriate bit rate to add to your stream. So now, right now, it's testing my browser directly, not using any plugins or any flash uh, ports or any tricks to give me an inaccurate reading. This is going to give you a really accurate reading of what my upload speed is. So my upload speed is 22 megabytes. So I can definitely go in now it hit retest and I'll, I would test this about three to four times to give you like an average because like I said right now I'm, I'm at a really high upload but when people in my house start using my internet I'm gonna drop down to about five megabytes of worth of upload so let's just say the average streamer if you're if your stream is about let's just say five megabytes right now I'm really high I'm 25 I, I typically would do about a little less than that so if I'm a five megabyte um, 
uh, MPS, MBPS upload, I'm gonna put it to 35, right? And that's in kilobits. So 3,500 kilobits is 3.5 megabits. So that's what your bitrate should be providing. Now, every, like I said, it's, it's different per person. I can't tell you what your upload is. Everybody upload internet is different. This is why I gave you this website, testmy.net to see what your current upload speed is and you're gonna adjust this number accordingly. So like I said, if, if, you're, if your upload is two megabits, 2.0 MBPS, right? So that would be in kilobytes or kilobits, that would be this. But you don't wanna put exactly that. You wanna give your, um, your internet speed some room to buffer and some room to breathe. So should your internet spike or should somebody log onto your Wi-Fi or should somebody else tap into your your internet, it's gonna fluctuate and you don't wanna have any drop frames or any inconsistency. So if, you're, if your upload speed is two megabytes, I was just gonna say you're gonna have to cut that down and maybe it's about half, you know, say, or 1500 kilobits. So that's what you're gonna do to adjust that. As far as your record quality, you can put it same as the stream right here and it can look just as crappy or just as good as whatever your video bitrate is. And you can not, you can ignore that and you can put high, which is like a medium file size, but it gives you a warning. Recording with a software encode at a different quality and will put extra stress load on your computer. So if your computer can handle it, go ahead and do that. I put, a, I pretty much uh, record at indistinguishable quality, which is a larger file because I have a very uh, large hard drive capacity. So it's not a problem for me. And uh, don't do losses because this is a tremendous file as it says. So. Even with all the specs that I have, I, I don't need that type of space being uh, taken up. Indistinguishable quality is, is good enough. So you go ahead and do that, and that should be your settings. As far as the audio goes, make sure your desktop audio device is selected on Soundflower to channel right there. So that way the OBS can pick up the audio that's being forwarded through, through the Soundflower. So it's very important that you definitely do that, and you should be good to go because the microphone is going to be picked up through the Elgato. So that's fine. Yeah, your sample rate, you can leave it 44.1 KAZ uh, channel stereo and everything else you just leave the default. Uh, video, you can scale that down. Like I said, this is a 5K monitor. This is the, the canvas resolution, which I can't change, but I can have it output and scaled down, which I typically stream at, stream at 720p. I don't really need to do that because I don't want to stress out my computer further than what I need to and I don't want to stress out my internet. So it's been downsized to a 720p resolution for when I stream. You can adjust that as you see fit. If you want to do a 1080p, that would be 1920 by 1080p, which should be in a setting somewhere. I don't see here on my computer, but I believe you can type it in manually if it doesn't show up automatically. So uh, for 1080p stream, it'll be 1920 by 1080, and obviously 720p is 1280 by 720. And once everything is good, you can definitely hit the start streaming button, make sure you get your stream key in and every time you stream, every day is a different stream, you're gonna have a different stream key per different stream. So always remember to get a fresh stream key when you do that, so. All right, so there's one thing I forgot to mention, I'm just gonna throw that in here really quick. Um, right down here, make sure your microphone slash auxiliary is muted. Just click a little red X right there because you don't wanna have double microphone like I said, uh, you want the mic to be picked up by the Elgato, which obviously I showed you guys here that the Elgato is going to be handling the mic, so you can see me talk when I talk, and it's being picked up. So the microphone is going to be handled by the Elgato, which is being captured by the desktop, which is also being forwarded by the Soundflower. So you do not want another mic source on the OBS picking up along with the Elgato that's going to cause audio issues, so make sure this is muted and let the audio be picked up through the Soundflower, which you can see right at the bottom. Soundflower, second channel. You let that happen just like that, and then the audio shall be picked up like that. So now, when you talk, the Elgato program is going to be handling, and you can see in the face cam right there, me holding my, my phone, you can see that the Elgato software is also gonna be handling the microphone. You don't need OBS doing that. The only time you would unmute that mic source there is if you're recording like a PC game when you don't need the Elgato software anymore. Then you uncheck that and then you use the microphone accordingly if you're using the game, like whatever PC game like to play, like a League of Legends, uh, Hearthstone, or whatever PC game you like. But I just wanna throw that in there and make sure I didn't forget because I almost forgot it, so I'm just throwing it in there last minute. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys out to stream with OBS using an Elgato capture card and having a console such as a PlayStation 4. Now the same method of uh, the way you record with the Elgato with the PS4, you can also do this with the Xbox. You should, you can also do this with the Wii U. You can also do this with the PS3. You can also do this with the Xbox 360. The console doesn't matter. I'm just using the PS4 as an example because that's the console I currently have and what I'm playing on currently. 
So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to write so in the description box below. And if you thought this video was helpful, a positive rating is always appreciated. If you like what you've seen, a positive rating is always appreciated. Also, hit that subscribe button and press that bell right next to it. Because when you do so, every time I upload a video, you'll be notified immediately. And for all you social networking dudes, I have a Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And if you're feeling really awesome, I have a button right in my description box below to keep me motivated. So hit that motivator. Anyway, this is Jay Silva, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.